Welcome back to another awesome video. Today we've got a couple of background music players, the ProFusion Icon and the ProFusion IS. Uh, these devices would normally sit in the back of a store and play music for the shoppers. Uh, but what was interesting to me about them is this case. It's a nice metal case. It's got buttons up front and it's got tons of ports in the back. I thought this would be great for a Raspberry Pi project. So normally I'm end up using just plasticky cases for my Raspberry Pis. And uh, these will hopefully be an improvement over what I normally use. So without being subscribed to the service, they're pretty much useless. But thought today a quick video would be, let's just take them apart and see what's in them, see what they do. Okay. I think what we have is two different versions of the same music player hardware. So on the left we have this presumably older one with a hard drive from 2011. It's a 320 gig hard drive. On this one we have, uh, we're missing this connector, I guess that's for memory or something. We're missing the hard drive mounts and everything is running off this SD card, which incidentally the SD card was covered by a plate you had to remove to actually access the SD card. There are three boards, the main, the main computer board. We've also got a board for the controls. Did and, you see what was on the SD card? Yes, I decided to do a little digital detective work on this SD card and take a look at some of the files and I learned a lot. The oldest date on a log file was the burn-in file on March 23rd, 2000 and the latest date on a log file was November 23rd, 2017. So on the device's last day of operation at 6.51 it was playing Mr. Know-It-All by Kelly Clarkson and apparently in addition to regular songs, every five songs or so it plays a jingle or an announcement or something. The music on the card was stored in files with a PFC extension which unfortunately my music players could not read. I guess it's proprietary. Um, Can't you just look up software that could read it? Much like a video game you know that you have that has a server yeah without the 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 back end it's useless right and so the company is not going to keep this going forever so like you can go online and find like cassette based background music systems you know or like that 3m cantana thing that tech moon did and those things are continue to work as long as the parts work but this is pretty much like a doorstop like e-waste these these were like five dollars so for five dollars that's a pretty good nice metal case I'm guessing that, if, that this was used at a five below store because it looks like in one of the log files is logging what buttons you click and a user changed it from adult contemporary to like five below 75% holiday sale back in 2016. So I'm guessing these are probably running. I don't know if five below has been around for that long. Since 2017? I don't know. I, I don't know. And the SD card player, base player was completely dead. It just showed... Uh, one line of characters on the LCD display. Never got anything out of that. I did get a response from the hard drive base player, however. It took a long time. I think it was running a check disk on the drive. It ran for a while. After that, it just showed a message saying the device had been deactivated. There was a way to enter a code and reactivate it, but I'm assuming you had to call the company and pay for a subscription before you could get that code. Did you ever try calling the company? I don't want to pay for this. I, I got <laughs> YouTube now. <laughs> well, four digits, 10,000 <laughs> possible combinations. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'll get back to you when I've gone through all possible 10,000 combinations. The next thing I tried was disconnecting the hard drive and putting the SD card back into the working player. And then the machine reformatted the SD card and went into some sort of fresh from the factory mode. Where it only, the only options appeared to be testing and loading software from a CD, which I didn't have. However, I did get some sound out of it. Zone 2. Zone 2. Zone 2. Zone 1. Zone 1. Zone 1. When it says Zone 1, Zone 2, it's playing different zone zones two. over the left and zone right two. outputs. And then it uses, uh, I guess, just to test the speakers. That would get kind of zone annoying. Two. Zone 2. Zone 2. Zone 2. This is a jack that could be a serial port. One of the pins is ground and the others are 3.3 volts. I got this device on Amazon a while back and I've never had an occasion to use it. What it does is it takes a uh, makes a serial port over a USB and you can use like terminal or something and so for routers and other things that have a serial port in theory you could just hook this up and press enter a couple times and you'd see a console not sure if that's what that is, but I'm going to try it and see what I get. Though it actually worked, I found out this is a serial port. I thought this was a serial port over here and ended up soldering some wires on there, but I don't know if it's timing or whatever, but this works. So if I turn it on now uh, and let it boot up, I actually get a bunch of stuff on my computer over here when I go into the shell, and you can see it's doing stuff. Uh, now, I, I, it looks like it's Linux, and it's uh, you know doing some disk checking and whatnot. 
after the console stops spewing all the stuff, we end up with this uh, software, copyright 2001 through 2012, open source, Linux, DirectFB, whatever. And of course, if I press enter now, I get a login and I have no idea what the login is. User, user, I mean, I, I don't, you know, obviously that's going to be incorrect password. So I don't know what to do at this point. Probably not worth the effort since this is some old system that really won't be able to be used. I was able to get into the CFE command prompt, which is a something like a common firmware environment for Broadcom devices. So I can load an image on here into the firmware if I knew what to do with it. But I swapped displays on these things to try to see if I could get the one that wasn't working working because it said something like could not find front panel. And unfortunately that made the one that was working act like the other one, but they were both spitting out output on the console and then getting stuck. I could interrupt the boot process and get into the common firmware update utility. I ended up accidentally bricking one of the devices by messing around with some of those commands. But anyway, we got our $5 worth of fun out of these things and they'll make good cases. So that's about it for this video. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye. Okay. That would get annoying. Shutting down.